I don't know. I guess you can see me now. So I don't know. We'll leave it as is. So I'm here in um, a wrinkly sweater, two week old locks, um, starting my YouTube channel. And um, to be honest, I'm not even really sure what my plan is other than I know that I am here to talk about life after breast cancer. Um, so I guess for my very first video, I will just kind of talk to you guys about my journey. Um, I do know that my objective is really to share with other young women, especially women under the age of 35, what the breast cancer journey is like, because I know that when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, when I was 29 years old in the very end of 2016, um, I found myself on YouTube a lot, trying to find things like hair growth after chemo, um, reconstructive surgery, um, you know, chemo effects on skin of black women or just uh, black folks in general, um, you know, keloiding scars after mastectomies. And I couldn't find anything. Like guys, when I say I couldn't find anything, I couldn't find anything. I think I found maybe one video of um, a lady and I, I think she was a little bit older, probably like in her 50s. She talked a little bit about hair growth after losing all of her hair to chemo. Um, and I was able to watch that and see you know how her hair grew for like the first couple of months but she didn't really follow back up and she didn't put up any videos after that and i'm really really hoping that um she's still with us today i don't know if she is uh, but prayers abound um and i'm you know sending all my love and hugs to this lady but overall i just couldn't find anything back up so i was diagnosed december 29th 2016 and I just remember it being two two days before New Year's Day of 2017 um, and it was devastating guys and um, I remember hearing those three words you have cancer I was only 20, like I said, I was only 29 years old. It was less than two months after my wedding to my other half, my heart. Um, and I heard those three words from the doctor. The doctor was sitting right in front of me. The nurse navigator was sitting to the left of me. And I, he just looked at me and said, I'm sorry, you're too young for this, but you have cancer. It was the cells were positive for breast cancer. And I just, I think it took about two seconds and then I just started to, to ball. And I started throwing out all of these questions. And I started asking like, is it something that I ate? You know, is it the birth control? I was on birth control for exactly probably five or five and a half years before this. Um, is it something, you know, is it something that I ate? At that point, I had been pescatarian for almost a year. Um, what what did I do? I, I kind of shifted right into self-blame. And both the nurse navigator, who was so sweet, and the doctor said, sometimes and oftentimes it's like the drawer draw of the luck draw draw of the luck draw of the luck and sometimes it just isn't an answer now take backing up a little bit i had found a lump mass in my right breast in i would say it was like july of 2016 so earlier that summer and i was like mm, you know, that feels a little weird. I don't really know what that is. And as far as I know, uh, breast cancer didn't run in my family. And all of my life, I had believed that if it didn't run in your family, not that you couldn't get breast cancer, but you are less likely to get breast cancer. And if you were to find something, it was probably something like fibro, fibroadenema or 
um, assist or something like that. So that's what, that's kind of just what I was assuming. I really didn't think it was a big deal. So anyway, fast forward to August, I had my yearly um, exam with my OBGYN and I showed him the lump and he felt around. He was like, okay, well, this is something we want to be cautious. You're very healthy, but we still want to be cautious. So I'm going to send you for an ultrasound. And so I, um, they made an appointment for me. I went for the ultrasound. I want to say it was like August 15th or the 16th of that year and he did the ultrasound he looked around and the radiologist was like I, I don't see the lump and I was like no nope, it's right there um, and he looked around he looked around he said okay you know well well I don't really see much on the screen um, here you're good to go um, and anyway so I received the letter in the mail about a week and a half later saying nothing to worry about you're good to go in hindsight, I wasn't that comfortable with that response because I'm like, it, this, it sounds like he's telling me there just wasn't a lump there and it's evident that there was a lump. But I was getting ready for my wedding, preparing, wedding dress, bridesmaids, cake, pictures, photography, all of that. So I was like, okay, I'll deal with that later. So I did push it to the back. Fast forward to my wedding, which took place November 5th, 2016. Um, right after my husband and I were just, we were just chilling. We were just laying on the bed and he felt it and he said, babe, this feels bigger than it did last time. So I'm thinking, okay, mind you, I'm still not thinking cancer. I'm just thinking, okay. And the interesting thing is, and I thought back to it, I don't know if my husband remembers this, but we actually joked and we were actually like, oh, what could it be, cancer? Well, <laughs> It was. Um, so anyway, so I decided that I was going to make another appointment for my ultrasound. I think I had a couple of weeks off of work right after the wedding. Um, I didn't tell my mom this time and I didn't tell my friend, my really good friend, Lindsay Horton, who went with me the first time I had the appointment. I just went by myself, I think. She either came with me the first time or the second time. I don't really remember. And but I didn't tell anyone. So the only person who really knew that I went was I think uh, Lindsay and my husband. And so I went and um, but this was after me causing havoc with my OBGYN who didn't want to send me back because he kept saying, you're good. You're so healthy. Let's just wait another year. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if I had waited one more year, I probably would have been stage four. So I'm so grateful that I really pushed. Um, and even though I didn't know why I was pushing. I did anyway. And I'm grateful to God that that spirit was just within me to just push, push, push and say, no, you need to send me back and you need to send me to someone different. So I went to a different radiologist. Love this doctor. He is my top doc. He is the person who removed the tumor. He's the person who took me seriously. He is the person who said, you're young, you're healthy, but I'm going to honor your request and I'm going to do another ultrasound. And then boom, there's this huge mass. I mean, he literally turned the screen and there was this gray mass on the screen. And guys, it was the size of a golf ball. A golf ball. So, um, okay, there's a mass there. It's a mass. Um, and he said, all right, I'm going to send you for a biopsy. So about a week later, he got me in for a biopsy, did the biopsy. Um, I had an appointment on the Thursday after, so four business days after to get the results read. And I completely forgot about my appointment. I was at work. I was enthralled with what I was doing at work. I think I was with a client actually, when I got the call, um, they had actually called me a couple of times. I missed the call, called back and they said, oh, you missed your appointment. Can you come in? We have your results. And I was like, oh, just tell me over the phone, busy at work. And she said, no, we really need you to come in. I'm still not thinking cancer, to be honest. Um, I'm just thinking, oh, they just ethically don't want to give me that information over the phone via phone. So, um, I asked if I could come in the next day and because I'm still not thinking anything major of it, I went to this appointment by myself. I was chipper, had my coffee, was good, great. They were just going to tell me it's a cyst, maybe remove it, go about your way. I go in, sit down and boom, Natasha Ella, 29 years old. You have breast cancer. 
We believe it's stage two based on the size and the, of the tumor, but we won't really know until we go in and do further testing, look at the grade of the tumor, and also um, take out some lymph nodes to see if it has spread beyond the breast area. So when they removed my lymph nodes during my initial mastectomy surgery, um, it hadn't spread, um, which I was very grateful for. So, and I'm going to do more videos. I'm going to do different videos on the different parts of my breast cancer journey, even till today, because I still am in active treatment, even though it's been about three years since my additional, my initial diagnosis and two years technically in remission. Um, I'm still in active treatment and I'll explain why in, in, um, later videos, but um, I did have a mastectomy. I had a bilateral mastectomy. I actually had to go in exactly six days later because I had a serious infection. So they had to clean me all out, wash it out. It's another couple of hours in that surgery. Came out, I was down for the count for five whole weeks. I could barely move, couldn't shower, couldn't clean myself, could barely eat. I lost a lot of weight. Um, during that time and my husband my mom flew down from Rhode Island to help out love you mommy and uh, I just couldn't do anything for myself I had to sleep on my back on incline for weeks it was so painful so painful um, but again I'll go into what that experience was like in a later video so again I just Part of why I'm starting a YouTube channel on Natty B's life after cancer is because I remember searching and being so desperate. And when I say desperate, I mean desperate. My nurse navigator said the worst thing you can do after a cancer diagnosis is go on the internet and Google. She told me not to, and I think I made it seven or eight days and I just couldn't do it. I was researching things left and right. I wanted to know what would happen during chemotherapy. I wanted to know what would happen during radiation. I wanted to know what would happen when I lose my breast. I wanted to know if I was even going to survive and see the next day. I wanted to know if I was gonna die next week. Um, and I wanted to know all of this stuff. And granted, I learned a lot of information that I'm actually honestly angry. They don't educate us on in school, in health class. I learned a lot of things, but I also scared myself to death. Looking at stuff on the internet, guys. Scared myself shitless. But, um, and I just remember saying to myself, there's no one out there that looks like me to tell me exactly what this journey is. I saw clips and I saw pictures, but I didn't see videos. I didn't see anyone to have a conversation with. And it was during this journey, I have met a lot of wonderful, wonderful um, survivors of all races that I have been able to learn from. But something as simple as what will my hair look like after chemotherapy? How will it grow? Um, what will my skin look like? How would it be impacted? there was nothing out there. And so even though it's taken me a while to get to a point of creating this and starting a YouTube video, I'm finally coming around to it. It's 2020. Cancer has taught me a lot. And it's like, why not? Right? Um, I've cried. I've cried enough tears to fill a really, really, really large pool. Um, I've been angry, I've been scared, I've been confused. And I've had a lot of great support along the way. And I'm hoping that I can support someone else. So follow me, Natty B's Life After Cancer. Please hit that like button, please subscribe. I appreciate your support, more videos to come. Talk to you guys soon.